Ever wonder why sometimes you don't feel motivated and find yourself procrastinating for maybe a little too much? All right, I've got a lot of work to do today, then I'm gonna meditate and go to the gym. Let's do it. Hmm. Maybe I can get started on everything after I watch just this one episode. Yeah. Wow, that was good. Um, should really get started, but just one more episode won't hurt anyone, right? Yeah. Wait, how did I end up on Instagram and why am I looking at pictures of cats dressed as tacos? That's it. I'm done. I need to get started. This is ridiculous. Let's go. And another day went by. I need a drink. Maybe I should just start tomorrow. <laughs> That's pretty much how it goes, right? And we've all been there in one way or the other. So why is that while knowing that things like studying, working on your goals or exercising are better for you and will bring you quite a lot of happiness in the future, why you still choose to self-sabotage and procrastinate? Why can't you feel motivated? Well, relax, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you and it has nothing to do with willpower or discipline. Your brain is simply hijacked. It's all about how your brain has been wired over time. And today, I'm going to show you how to hack the wiring to actually crave hard work. Sounds impossible? Maybe. But trust me, it's not. I used to think there was something wrong with me. I had all these goals, all these dreams, whether it was business or fitness, but I just couldn't find the motivation to act on them consistently, to do the hard work necessary to achieve those goals and dreams. I always avoided the real work. I always took the easy way out, thinking I'll start tomorrow, but you know, tomorrow never came. You see, our brains are wired to seek pleasure and to avoid pain. It's a survival mechanism, and in today's modern society, with endless sources of instant gratification, our dopamine system, the part of our brain responsible for reward, pleasure and motivation, gets completely hijacked. And so instead of working towards long-term goals, we get stuck chasing short-term pleasures. Hi, my name is Gabriel and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please click on the subscribe button, like this video and let me now show you how to transform your brain by understanding and managing your dopamine system as you've never heard it before. Let's begin. Okay, let's start with the basics. Dopamine. Everyone talks about dopamine these days, but what exactly is dopamine? Because understanding what it actually is and how it works is crucial. So dopamine is a neurotransmitter, which is a fancy way of saying that it's a chemical messenger in your brain. It's often called the pleasure of feel-good chemical because your brain releases it when you do something enjoyable, like eating your favorite food or achieving a goal. And this release is what makes you feel good, what reinforces that behavior and what makes you want to do it again. But here's where it gets interesting because dopamine Dopamine is actually not just about pleasure, but more about motivation and anticipation. And research has shown that dopamine is not really released when you get a reward, but more when you expect a reward. And this anticipation is what drives you to act. For example, Robert Sapolsky, a professor of biology and neurology at Stanford, was able to train a group of monkeys to press a button 10 times in order to receive a food treat. At the same time, he also measured the dopamine levels in their brains and found that the monkeys released the most dopamine during the button pressing and not after receiving the reward. The pleasure was not in the reward, but in the anticipation of it and in the effort put into earning it. And this is extremely important to understand. Now, let me give you an example. Imagine yourself as a kid again, waiting for your your turn on the swings at the park. With every swing back and forth, your anticipation grows. Your heart starts pounding with excitement because soon you'll finally be on that swing too and that feeling that's dopamine. Or if you see a delicious slice of pizza right now, that's when your brain will release most of the dopamine, now when you eat it. Again, it's this very anticipation what drives you to take action and eat it. And it's this anticipation that drives you into literally anything you do in your life. And from an evolutionary standpoint, the dopamine system was designed to simply reward us from doing those things that we needed to do to survive. And this is where the big problem comes. Because our brains have simply not adapted to modern society. Our brains are optimized to live in a world which dealt with finding food, shelter and reproduce. In a world where we needed that motivation so we don't die. And in the past, rewards were really, really hard to come by. You had to work really hard for your food and definitely even harder for things like entertainment, if it even existed. But now, everything is literally one click away. I mean, think about it, if we don't like the temperature in our room, we can just 
press a button and change it. That's insane. We don't work hard for anything anymore. Everything has just become too easy. And since our brains are wired for survival, not happiness, they will always choose the fastest and most simple way for us to survive, which worked very well in ancient times. But today, as you know, there are just quicker and easier pleasures available that the brain will naturally choose. So even if you're aware that 20 minutes of exercising is better than 20 minutes of Netflix, your brain perceives Netflix as being more effective since it uses way less energy. Energy. And the more you indulge, the more you pretty much become addicted, craving more and more dopamine, leading to you eventually ending up self-sabotaging your entire life. Alright, let's talk about addiction. Now, when we hear the word addiction, we often think of drugs or alcohol. But addiction can happen with anything that gives us any quick hit of pleasure, any quick hit of dopamine, like social media, TV, junk food, video games, you name it. Now, we all have a baseline level of dopamine constantly being released and that level rises with certain things we do or ingest. And every time you have a peak in your dopamine, it crashes below your previous baseline, establishing that low as your new baseline, so the next time you'll need more dopamine to feel good. Let's take your phone for example, something that every single person on here can relate, but again, this goes for every quick hit of pleasure. Research over the years has shown that when you use your phone, especially for social media, your brain releases a lot of dopamine, like a lot. Your brain actually associates the constant flow of notifications, likes, comments, and the new content you find when you're scrolling as a source of reward. So it starts pumping more and more dopamine, but it's so much that it's more than your dopamine receptors can even handle. So as a result, the receptors go like, whoa, this is too much, please slow down, we need a break, and so they close down and become desensitized. And this leads to a little problem. As your dopamine receptors become desensitized, you need now more of the stimulating activity to achieve the same pleasurable effect. It now takes more and more dopamine. So you literally become addicted, and brain scans of social media addicts, by the way, look actually very similar to those of drug abusers, which is a bit scary if you think about it. And on a side note, since we're talking about using the phone excessively, remember the monk experiment I shared with you earlier? Dr. Sapolsky actually conducted another experiment where he made the reward unpredictable this time, and unpredictability increases anticipation. So he made the monkeys receive the food treat only 50% of the time after pressing the button. And the result? Twice as much dopamine was released. So the less predictable the reward, the more dopamine is released. Now you probably understand why the phone is so addictive and why you might find yourself checking your phone multiple times an hour or every five minutes or every five seconds even when you know there's literally nothing new. The unpredictability keeps you coming back for the next dopamine hit. Because remember it's not the activity itself that's the most addictive part, it's the anticipation, the build-up. That's what drives you to take action to either open your favorite app, eat your sugary snack or watch the next episode of a TV show. So what happens now that your receptors are desensitized? Well, lack of motivation. Things that used to be enjoyable like hobbies, exercising or working towards your goals, they're just not anymore. It's like trying to get excited about broccoli when you're used to chocolate cake. And this is exactly why we struggle being motivated. Modern society has poisoned us. Let me now show you how to take your power back. So how do you rewire your brain to crave hard work? Well, the first step is to understand how dopamine works, which you now do. The second step is to subscribe to this channel and like this video. A recent study has shown that when you subscribe to this channel, and if on top of that you like the video and even leave a comment, your dopamine receptors are... <laughs> okay, I'm done, but please like and subscribe, it will mean so much to me. And the third step is to understand that it's possible, which it is, because your dopamine receptors can return to normal. That's how amazing our brain is. You've probably heard about dopamine detoxes, the trend that suggests you that you can reset your brain by temporarily eliminating all sources of dopamine. However, this concept is just a tiny bit flawed because you can't detox dopamine. Dopamine is a crucial neurotransmitter that your body can function without and plays quite the big role in your daily life. So the real goal is not to eliminate dopamine but to recalibrate your sensitivity to it. And when you simply cut down on your excessive dopamine stimulation, your brain is now the capacity to resensitize its dopamine receptors, which means a lot of motivation to do all the things you need and want to do. Now, let me share with you something that I found really interesting. People that go through silent meditation retreats all report a profound shift in their dopamine sensitivity. After 16 hours of daily meditation and sensory deprivation, tasks that participants once dreaded, the hope became incredibly rewarding. And while a 10-day silent retreat might not be practical for most of us right now, the key takeaway is clear. 
By reducing external stimulation, you can reset your reward sensitivity and find intrinsic motivation in the most mundane, boring and hard tasks. Fortunately, you don't need to go on a silent retreat to reprogram your dopamine system, so here are the 5 simple steps to recalibrate your dopamine sensitivity starting now. And remember, when I talk about this stuff, make sure you do it, don't just watch the video, make sure you take actions. 1. Digital Detox This is the one you should all know about already, but it's crucial for me to remind you. And I'm not saying you must delete all of your apps or don't use the phone for a week or so, but in some cases it might also be the best thing for you to do, because if you're really addicted to certain things like TikTok, for example, literally just delete your account. Or if you're really binge watching that many shows, just delete that Netflix subscription. Just delete it. Make it hard so you don't do it. There's also tons of apps that can block your websites and apps at specific times, like the Freedom app, which you can check it out if you want. But the key here is that you must set boundaries. You must create no phone times. For example, no phones during meals or for the first hour after you wake up. Or no phones before bed or even worse, in bed. I personally allocate specific times where I check or use my phone during the day and it makes quite a big difference. 2. Take boring breaks Most of us take what I call dopamine breaks by scrolling through social media, checking emails or watching news. The critical mistake here is that you're engaging in activities that are more stimulating for the brain than the work itself. Imagine trying to read a scientific research paper after an hour of swiping through Instagram. The solution? Take boring breaks, like 15 minute naps walking or light exercise with no music, nothing, or my favorite, simply staring at a wall. When you take a break, can you just allow yourself to stare at a wall for 15 minutes? Trust me, it's so hard, but look what happens after. By depriving your brain of dopamine during breaks, you'll start to crave the rewarding rush of returning to work. 3. Don't escape the in-between moments. Think about the last time you were waiting in line or sitting alone at the cafe. Chances are you reach for your phone to scroll mindlessly, seeking for a quick dopamine hit. And these in-between moments are amazing opportunities to reset our reward sensitivity. So practice being present. When waiting in line, pay attention to your breath. Just become aware of the fact that you're breathing and breathe while Driving, embrace the silence without music or without podcasts. At the cafe when you're alone, resist the urge to scroll or use your phone and simply stay there and observe your surroundings. By learning to tolerate these moments of low stimulation, you'll gradually shift your baseline for what feels boring and you'll see it won't even feel boring anymore after a while. 4. Do one thing at a time. Have you ever been so in flow while doing a task that you completely forgot about the world? That's the beauty of singular focus, facilitated by the interplay between the brain's default mode network and the task's positive network. When the TPN is active, when you're focused on a single task, the DMN is suppressed and vice versa. So when you rapidly switch between these networks, like texting while walking, your brain is simply not working as effectively anymore because there's so much cognitive load. Your brain is simply not designed to multitask. And I'm sorry if you think you're really really good at multitasking, I love that, that's amazing, I'm really happy for you, but imagine what you could do without. And here's the thing, when you engage deeply with a single task, your brain will begin to make those activities more rewarding. So begin to adopt a one thing mindset. When you eat, just eat. When you work, just work, no distractions. And during conversations, just be fully present. 5. Meditate. If you know me, you know I'm quite the big fan of meditation and research has shown that meditation can significantly influence the brain's dopamine system. Meditation not only boosts dopamine production, but also enhances the sensitivity of the dopamine receptors. Regular meditation practice has been associated with increased receptor density in regions of the brain involving self-control and emotional regulation, such as the prefrontal cortex. This means that your brain becomes more efficient at using the dopamine it produces, leading to greater satisfaction from less stimulating activities. And if you like to to participate in my upcoming four-week meditation program, simply click in the link in the description and put down your info so I can notify you when the doors to meditation mastery will open once again. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find this video helpful and inspiring. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And remember, it's not about being lazy or lacking motivation. It's about how our brains are wired and how we can take control of the wiring. Now go apply those five steps and... Just watch your life change.